The history of the one-of-a-kind show began when in December of 1975, three artists and friends couldn't find a place to sell her work before Christmas. Together, they decided to create their own holiday shopping venue. This is the biggest, most reputable show in Canada. This is the place to be. We've been coming here since 1995. Um, so, you know, it's got the best craftspeople in Canada. We've got, you know, throughout the show, there are items from, you know, a couple bucks up to several, several thousand dollars. So whatever you're looking for, you can find really neat stuff here. Hispanos in Canada could visit the one of a kind, the largest consumer craft show in North America. The show takes place every year during the months of December and March. And it is a good alternative to find the perfect gift. What can you find here that you can't, like in a big mall, in a big store? Well, there's two things. One, you can find products that are handmade, that are very unique. And the other opportunity is to talk to people who actually make them. And I think that that's actually the, uh, the coolest part about coming to this show. But the one-of-a-kind show is not just a shopping place. You can find exotic art, different foods, model shows, and quite particular people. Broke at Christmas time, and then I had to go home and bring all uh, you know everyone some presents, and I didn't have anything, so I made some dudes, and they're like, "These are great." I'm like, "Okay, should make some more and sell them." And then, ta da! Yeah, what are they made of, actually? It's a polymer clay, so it's like uh, plasticine, but you can cook it in your oven at home, and then through the magic of chemistry, they come out rock hard. I was t trying to get through fine arts in, in, uh, in university and I needed money so I uh, started making puppets for a store in Old Montreal. So uh, I was doing mostly like Sesame Street rip-off puppets. <laughs> Didn't say that. But uh, uh, later on I did my own models. So I started about 20 years ago uh, making a living at making puppets. I started when I was 12 I think. When the first time I saw the Muppets I, uh, I wanted a, germ a Kermit and a Cookie Monster and stuff so I decided to make a puppet. Where do you get the inspiration for making these own puppets? Like you said, yeah, you said at first you started with Sesame Street, but then you started your own. Yeah. Kind of, so how do you? How does one think of to design a puppet? <laughs> well, it goes. Uh, it has to be a simple design, you know, because I don't want them to cost a lot. So they're and they have to be affordable, so kids can use them and safe. So I, I just. Uh, I, I sometimes I think oh, I want to make monsters, furry monsters. I'll do that, or like uh, little critters, like a bee and stuff. So I just. I just, they don't have actually follow anything, like I don't make story characters, they don't, uh, I don't do like uh, the three pigs and the wolf, you know, so they sort of don't make sense in the way, <laughs> in the way that they are, uh, uh, they, go, they go together. Yeah. But I think that's kind of the attraction because they're so, just as we were walking by, they're just so bright and vivid. Yeah, yeah. Because that you always trying to like, incorporate colors, just kind of catch people's yeah, eyes? Yeah, yeah, they got to be like uh, bright, uh, you know, primary colors. This is my super bright one there, the, the dodo bird. I've been making him for 20 years. Uh, this is my 18th one of a kind Christmas show. Uh, I just sell them to, uh, you know, to parents and aunts and uncles and anyone that wants a puppet. All the Muppet fans in the world that uh, get you, to have a real puppet. Do you find that it's better to kind of set up shop here than say at a mall or something just because it's kind of... Uh, well, I, this is sort of just as, you know, it, I just make so much, you know, I, I, they're not mass produced, so um, so just a, a craft show like this, I can sell them, even though the, I, I find they're not expensive. Uh, if they were being sold in a mall, you know, they'd be expected to have things made in China and then they would really like, uh, you know, you, then you want this at like one third the price, you know. And it's just, so the craft show is a perfect venue for my puppets. My two passions uh, got together about music and woodworking and so I started a study about uh, wood resonance years ago and so um, that led to many prototypes and the prototypes uh, lead to uh, what I'm doing right now in Tambor. It's a musical instrument, it's a percussion instrument, it's uh, actually it's a resonance box it's, uh, and it's uh, 
by hitting on the wood you make it resonate and by working the wood I can tune it so I tune them to different keys that are a little magical uh, so I can show you uh, the, the, what, 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 what it uh, yeah, sounds like talking is uh, The first one took me five years to, from the idea I had and to the final product. So uh, I went through a few hundreds uh, prototypes. There's a research about tuning too, because yeah, once you know how to control the sound of the wood, yeah, you have to decide which tonality, what kind of harmony you want. So this was another thing too, another issue. Of course, I, I mean this is all. This is a one-of-a-kind instrument. So I mean, uh, to be at the one-of-a-kind show makes a lot of sense to me. It's, uh, of course, it's handcraft, but it's also unique. So remember, if you want to find a unique gift, a unique food, or unique people, the one-of-a-kind show will be back in March.